Good day everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this special watercolor class I recorded for the Arlington Public Library Art is for Everyone program. My name is Jamie Merrim. I'm an artist at Catalyst Creative Arts, an art studio in downtown Arlington. Today we are going to paint a simple colorful watercolor cactus. I have placed watercolor tips on the screen or on the paper, you've probably read them by now. Um, there are so many techniques for watercolor painting. My best advice when learning to paint watercolors is to use gentle or no brushing. Be patient, wait for areas to dry, and enjoy. So I have two brushes here. I like to use two brushes. Sometimes I use two hands. That's not necessary. Um, but I like to use two brushes so I can have a brush for water only and a brush for paint only. It's not necessary either, but it does sometimes save some steps with cleaning. And you'll see that as I work. I do like to use two cups of water one for cleaning the brush and then one for using water on the paper. And we'll talk about that some more as I work on my project. The first thing that I want to do is sort of do a basic layout of my cactus form. I could do this with pencil, or you could, or even ink. Um, but this form of sort of like a prickly pear shaped type of cactus simple enough that I'm going to just use paint to do my placement. I'm getting a little green here and I'm mixing into my watercolor to dissolve some water there and I'm going to I guess sort of practice with my hand the, sh the main shape of the lower part of the body of the cactus in this area because I want to save room up here for maybe some upper appendages, is that what you call it on the cactus, that include a few flowers. So I'm going to put my body in this area and I think I'm going to paint something like this. That's going to be the body. I might do a little bit more here, what I want to do. And I like to make my cactus, actually pretty much anything I paint with watercolors, I like to use lots of different color. I like to, um, let's not do blue, let's do something like this. I like to use a lot of different color. Um, in an unrealistic way because watercolors do some really great things. You see I'm adding water here this time. Watercolor when it reacts with other color, I suppose that's where the magic is created with this medium. So I'm getting my brush wet, painting some areas of color, then I'm going to spread some water onto it. just to thin it out. And sometimes I go into those areas and add secondary colors. You see this two greens here? Let's add some yellow to that. I'm not really brushing in the way 
you would think brushing would be done on a painting. Instead, I prefer to sort of gently touch the brush in the areas where I've placed color or water or both. This allows color to travel this in those wet areas and blend into the other colors. That's a lot of blue. So I'm rinsing because I want to add some water to it. Thin it out a little bit. And then redraw my edge here. See what happens to the blue when it moves. some of this dark orange that I just mixed. Lay that into a few spots and then get some water. And fade it out a little bit. Here you see I've gotten it too wet. I'm going to have to let that area dry. Sometimes you get spots that are too wet. Can't really do any more work to it or color change to it until it dries up. You could also, if you need to work an area, remove some water. A small piece of tissue. That's why I have this tissue here. See, I'm drying my brush. Sometimes, between color application, you might want to dry your brush off on the tissue. Especially if you're already putting color into a watery area. I like that purple, but I want to make some of those purple spots lighter. So I'm just adding a little water to lighten it up. Let's go to the body above, or the second part of the cactus. We have some, kind of a tilting this way. I go make the other side tilt the other way a little bit. Do something like this. Prickly pears kind of grow in segments, right? With that line I drew, I'm going to drag some of that paint up. Let's go with a brown. What color is this one? So I'll have a little purple on my brush. with this new area right here of heavy color that I just put down. I'm going to add a little water to that and let it flow around and lighten up. Try this one. I'm looking for something a little more yellowy. 
Let's go back to that yellow. See what happens if we add some of this yellow to our mixed area. really like this purple. So I think I'm going to build a few more arms. So you can see what I'm doing. I wash my brush here, get a little fresh water from the other one. Wash, get a little water, fix my color, drop some color into my color areas. This has a little bit of time, has had a little bit of time to dry. Looks a little unbalanced with that big blue arm, so maybe I'll do a small one here. Get fresh water. Break up some of this dark line that I just made. Let's try this magenta looking color. Maybe add a little here. Let's spread into a few spots. Pink is really bright, so I think I'm going to use just a small amount. Make my pink settle in and be able to see it pretty easily. For the flowers, 
Let's do the bottom portion dark. And I want to use a similar technique. Now, I'm going to get a little bit of water here inside the flower. Then I think we'll do some yellow on top. Something like that. You see it's going to mix, right? While these are different elements that I just painted are drying, I'm going to work on the base. I don't mean the base, I mean like maybe a little dirt so the cactus doesn't look like it's floating in the air. This line is too visible. Let's do something like this. Do a little dirt. Get some water. Maybe add secondary color to the dirt. Let's try this one. We haven't used this one today. this in some of the areas where the water is still wet. What does dirt look like? What color is dirt? I tried to make my cactus not float and it looks like it's still floating. Let's put a little bit of this right. I think what I'm going to do is grab some of this really bright, bright yellow and put it into the flower in some spots where it's still a little wet. Sometimes at the end, or before the end, what I do is determine if my painting needs anything else. I like to step back, take a look, and then sometimes I'll also use a thin brush and do some detail work. For example, fix this line here. Maybe make it a little bit darker on that corner. Maybe I'll use some really dark red. Same thing. Make my brush thin by rolling the tip, you see? Add some dark red to the bottoms of these. A little wet there still. We 
can come back to that when it's a little drier. The edge of this cactus here looks a little strange. So I'm going to try this green here. Same thing, get it nice and thick, and then thick meaning stir the water in completely. And roll my brush to keep it thin. Then I'm going to put a nice line here, or at least on part of it. Make that edge a little darker. And I'm getting some water. Try to soften this up a little bit so you don't see the brush mark. I made this brush, brush entirely. I think the base is going to be a little darker. So let's add some of this down here. Let's get into this light purple. And I'm going to put a little bit of this purple that I'm mixing here in one of these little wells in the lid and make it even lighter. It's another technique you can use. I don't want to get my paper any wetter than it is, so I want to dilute this down here. Do a few additions of purple. It's already diluted. So now the only thing I have left to do, oops, I splashed here, that's no good, is something that represents some thorns. And I would use something dark, black. One of these purples might work. Let's use this one. Let's see what color that is. Wow, that's really dark. So I'm gonna mix a little bit here, make it nice and thick. Roll my brush in it. Keep my brush nice and thin. And try to make thorns. I just put three, four, five. Just don't make them look all the same. Right? I think it's this was a natural cactus. You have some looking a little smaller, some growing close to the edge, right? Some longer, some shorter. Seems like that would be obvious, but once you start doing something with your hand, it's going to want to repeat that movement, that motion, the brush motion. And by repeating it, we naturally have a tendency to repeat in the same pattern. So you need to work on intentionally making them different, using a different pattern. Oops, that's black. I don't want to use black. Let's put a few more up here. If you have areas that are still wet, don't put, don't draw any thorns on them. Let's say thorns. I guess these would be needle, pricker. What do you call a cactus? Needle, right? Remember, when you use a brush, the 
the less pressure you use, thinner your lines will be. In general. And the more pressure you use, the more the bristles will spread out, and the thicker your lines will be. So, I'm holding my arm up, very still, I'm just using some small motions with my fingers, and my wrist a little bit, just to keep my arm steady, so that I can keep my pressure even. And keeping the pressure even helps me keep those brush bristles from spreading out. And I was telling you or warning you about doing patterns or making your needles, cactus needles look the same. The other thing you want to do is you want to make them not evenly spaced out because that would be another pattern that your brain might tell you, well, that doesn't look real. Those needles are all perfectly spaced apart. I think we'll do one more here, and then we'll take a look and see, by standing up, standing away from it, if I have enough of the elements that I want. I think what I'm gonna do is use some of this dark purple I've been using. Make it a little bit darker down here at the base, and then again here where it attaches. Oh, that's not good. That's okay. We'll get some water and spread this out. Much better. I'm not sure how it looks on the screen, I'm assuming that it might be a little shiny because it's wet. Um, so let's get some of this light yellow. <clears throat> I think the only thing missing now is just a little pink, just a touch in a couple of the flowers. I like to do that, well one, because this is crazy with all these colors, right? But maybe also just to indicate Some natural variety. I like it. Obviously, I'm going kind of quick. I don't want to make this video take forever for you to watch. If I wasn't recording, I probably would have dragged it out and gone a little slower in order to have areas like right here not get so wet. Keep things under a little bit more control. But when you recreate yours after you've watched this video, you can try that. Maybe going a little slower, taking the time to have your areas dry so you have a little bit more control. Something like that. Now there's a light on the camera I'm going to turn that off because I think it's making some areas look shiny. And I want to get rid of that line. I don't like that line there. I think after that, I think we'll be done. So I'm going to add a little bit here. 
I didn't mean line, I just meant the line that you can see created by the edge of my brush. I think that's it. If you need a lot of control, you can put your rest your hand on something. Like the table. Well, that's it for today and my watercolor painting. I hope you enjoyed that. I want to thank the Arlington Public Library for the Arts for Everyone, Artists for Everyone program. It's been a real honor teaching classes at the library for that program. And I hope that you all who might be watching this video continue to participate in this program. And I hope to hear from you at my studio, Catalyst Creative Arts, right here in downtown Arlington. Thank you.